Welcome to the talk show of Philip Magazine English Institute of State. Today is a very special episode for us. This is going to be a panel discussion. All these days, I had one-on-one -on -one interviews with the industry professionals, but this time we have, we have thought about to go with a couple of uh, industry professionals to talk about their career and their messages and how they feel the in the in the, in the industry. So we have an eminent panel today. Uh, travel and events industry. We have selected travel and event industry. Uh, professionals to talk about uh, their perspective. We have uh, Mr. Imran Hassan, uh, Managing Director, CDC Events and Travels Private Limited. We have Mr. Nishad uh, Vijayatunga, Director, CEO, Wafers Limited. Then we have Mr. Roshan Vijayaratna, Managing Director, Events Production, Private Limited. So they are here to talk about their career, uh, the, uh, how they see the industry and the prospects of the industry. Let me uh, start from Imran. I need to congratulate you, Imran, for your new appointment, the president of uh, Slapsio. Talk about Slapsio a bit, then go to your uh, uh, career. Yes, uh, I mean, um, uh, I think I'm here to speak uh, not on behalf of Slapsio, but I'll talk about no. Slapsio. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, uh, SAPSU is uh, uh, an association which has uh, a history of about 20 years now. Uh, uh, SAPSU uh, was uh, 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 in operation uh, since I think uh, uh, 2000 or 99 or something like that. That period when we signed up an agreement with the City of Delhi's Association to have a minimum rate uh, for my tourism. That's how uh, one of the coming together of STEPSU and uh, members of the STEPSU were part of the Convention Bureau membership. Uh, the exhibition STEPSU stands for Sri Lanka Association of Professional Conference and Exhibition Organizers initially. Uh, they were all uh, the members of the, the Convention Bureau, all the professional congress and uh, exhibition organizers, the PCOs and the PEOs of the Convention Bureau. Uh, we used to pay a membership to the Convention Bureau as well. Um, uh, and those those about five or six companies consisted of Slapsio at that time. Uh, that was Jetwings, uh, it can spend John Peels, uh, 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 uh and uh, Hemas, five companies. Uh, and then later onwards, uh, when the uh, Convention Bureau became a statutory body and there were no membership, all other related, uh, 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 mice related uh, uh, companies. Uh, who were with the Convention Bureau became members of the uh, Slapsio because there was no other place for them to hang, <laughs> basically. So, uh, or, to, or to coordinate with. Uh, so, so we basically. So, sorry, Imran, the MICE meaning uh, meetings, incentives, conferences, ex exhibitions. Am I correct? Yes. So, all these uh, companies who were involved with the Convention Bureau as members, when the Convention Bureau with the act, changing of act, they all became members of the uh, step CEO. So, 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 so we opened our arms, uh, uh, opened it uh, to uh, uh, incentive houses uh, who were members of the Convention Bureau, who were specializing in mice, uh, event companies who were specializing in mice, destination event companies, uh, um, uh, sports event companies, and then uh, some wedding planners had come in. Uh, so, all destination events. Uh, plus the conference and exhibition, of course, remain to be the mainstay uh, together with some hotels uh, as associate members and the venue providers like uh, SLECC and BMICH, uh, all these organizations became our members. So that is how uh, Stapsio has been going on. Uh, then uh, about 10 years ago, we made Stapsio a more formal organization, uh, formalized it and then uh, the, at that time also I was the president of Stapsio. Then, uh, uh, I, I take over to go steps you on the end of June, uh, or I think 30th of June, once again as the president. Uh, I think some, there was a request by some members for me to come and take it over. So I, I obliged. Uh, uh, times are bad, so they thought uh, I'll be a good uh, uh, leader. Uh, Candidate to take over when times are bad. <laughs> so that, that, that's how Stepsio is. Uh, so, uh, my, my, of course, I have been involved in Stepsio right from the beginning of my career. So, I'll just talk uh, a little bit about my start. Am I right? Yeah. 
we need to hear your story yes yes your story so basically i i i i came into uh, uh, work for cdc events in uh, 1998 i think it was march or april uh, since then uh, i mean uh, i've been uh, employed uh, in this industry i think uh, it's almost um, uh, almost 25 years a few more years to go to hit 25 in this industry uh, before that i was uh, in uh, in in a, a different industry for a couple of years uh, so since i came into cdc events uh, cdc conventions uh, a part of panesan's group uh, we started organizing exhibitions uh, when we started organizing exhibitions uh, there were only three exhibitions in 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 sri lanka as far as i know one was of course the uh, uh, expo fair which was which was organized by the government then it was infotel architects and techno there were no other exhibitions in in sri lanka at that time uh, so it was in 2000 2000 no no we are talking about 1998 1998 so i was brought in to do the first exhibition when cdc convention which was into uh, 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 my tourism which was uh, purposely uh, may, uh, uh, started as a part a subsidiary of the panesans group uh, to uh, 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 to look at my tourism which they were handling conferences at that time uh, they brought into with me to start the first exhibition my first exhibition was the event called office 98 okay uh, and, and then uh, then uh, we did lot of uh, exhibitions from that Time to now, I, I would have done over 500 to 600 exhibitions uh, uh, in the uh, uh, office automation to tourism. We have the operators in the Maldives, in India, in Seychelles. Uh, I mean, I was the first guy instrumental when I was uh, 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 to do the first trade fair in Jaffna, right? Uh, so, so I I I I, uh, I organized the first ever trade fair in the Maldives. Until then, there was no trade fair business in the Maldives. and uh, what was it know, imran uh, if i may ask what uh, it, it was called hotel asia in year hotel. 2000 yeah okay the hotel supplies exhibition of course uh, like the hotel show we do in the silon hotel school graduates association but in the mall dips okay so um, yeah so i mean so my four days trade fairs of course uh, as far as uh, conference is concerned i have been involved in some of the largest conferences ever to take place in sri lanka to be organized by the private sector or a pco uh, one was the asia pacific aids conference where we had over 3000 delegates that was a combination between uh, uh, at that time uh, my company and etkan spence and then uh, uh, the other huge conference we have done is the isami forum it is the uh, 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 india asia pacific Africa and Middle East, the Lions uh, Congress, uh, which had uh, the last land Isami Forum had uh, around in the year 2015, we had, uh, 2016 we had about 2,500 foreign delegates. Okay. So uh, I mean the foreign delegates. Huh? So the, these these were that was uh, that I claim that event to be the largest uh, con- conference handled by a single uh, uh, company uh, uh, on its own. Uh, without any government involvement so uh, uh, we had uh, 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 so imran uh, if if i may if i may interrupt you where did you have this conference because uh, sri lanka BMSH, does not have bmsh okay BMSH, which was at bmsh functions were temple trees bmsh uh, i mean we, in fact we didn't have enough infrastructure to do these events you know that's so, what i asked the question yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah so i mean when you take a conference of that nature we handle from registration budgeting planning uh we prepare a certain amount of it right uh, delegate registration on site registration to a group to a tour us in uh, uh, there are there are congress in congress tours post congress tours pre congress tours right uh, uh banquet functions launches right and marketing of the whole event in fact when, when the, uh, the we, we go to the previous event i mean we were going for two years apparently we go to the even uh, the previous event uh, which was uh, in ahmedabad i remember and we did a, we we, do, we we market uh, the, the the event in sri lanka so basically we we, we promote delegates to come the more delegates come 
the, the more profitable it is to us, the organizers and the 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 country and the hoteliers to the travel agents to even the guy who sells a family on the road, you know, you know, is is making money when when we manage to bring in a delegate and and uh, um, uh, it is said that uh, the buying power of a, a, a Congress delegate uh, is is about three times that of a, a leisure delegate because leisure delegate comes on a package. The Congress delegate comes on a paid tour, uh, paid tour. especially when it is a, a business uh, conference and uh, they are uh, tour is paid for. So they have enough money, they have per diem, everything, you know. Yes. Good. Very interesting. Very, very. Uh, I would say it's a success story that you have come across, bringing exhibition to the country and having having uh, very limited ex- infrastructure. But you you have conquered your career. Interesting. So I will uh, go to uh, Nishad. Nishad, uh, your career and starting from the Royal College. <laughs> <laughs> We we'll skip the Royal College part. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so after Royal College, actually, when I left left school, by uh, what I was, what I really started doing was I I got into the NIBM and I qualified in computer systems design, which was the order of the day. I don't know. I mean, those days when uh, we were leaving school, I think Roshan and I don't know whether Imran. Imran's probably too young, but. Um, you know, either you had, I mean, either you had to do a doctor or a lawyer or an engineer. And if you don't do those things, you had to do ICMA or that was it. Or then subsequently the computers came in and then marketing. ICMA or CIMA? ICMA CIMA? It used to be called ICMA. Ah, okay. Okay. So, <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, so basically, uh, so computers was the way I was going. I. Uh, I spent about a year on uh, getting my diploma and then ended up uh, working for a company setting up their entire computer system and all that and then actually I got bored uh, sitting in front of a screen. Now I spend a lot of time in front of a screen but those days I mean setting up a thing was getting a bit boring. Then um, got into started doing marketing exams again I was not very much of an academic so it didn't really pan out maybe one or two parts of it I got through and that was it. Uh, but with that change, uh, within that company itself, I moved into doing uh, doing branch management and I was posted out of Columbia. And then of course came back and uh, joined. Um, uh, I left that place and I joined Celtel, which was the first uh, mobile phone company in uh, cellular telephone company in Sri Lanka. And I was on the marketing team with, as a marketing executive and uh, or what they called us those days a market development executive. Anyway, uh, very, very challenging. The biggest challenge was to convince, I mean, even in spite of the fact that uh, telephones were a big problem at that time, getting a landline, getting a telephone line was a huge issue at that time. But in spite of that, uh, we had a major challenge because people were very excited that they could take their phone with them. but. When they heard they had to pay for incoming calls, it was absolute no-no. So anyway, uh, did that for a few years and then of course... Uh, after so, I, sorry Nishad, this is sometime uh, in the 1990s, right? Mid-90s. This is uh, late 80s. Late 80s. 89-90. And then uh, of course, uh, after I got married, then we, we had a eldest son in 91. And it was actually, uh, Wayfarers was set up by my wife's brother. Back okay. in '76, so the company is actually celebrating 45 years this year, and uh, and of course uh, they he migrated to Australia with his family in late '88, and uh, then my wife was running the business, but it was not not doing great at the time because obviously uh, tourism was not doing very well, but uh, I anyway had this travel bug in me because since we were kids. Uh, my father, my parents used to always take us around on holiday and things like that. And my father usually made it out to be like an educational trip. So, just traveling far and wide all over the country. And then, uh, <clears throat> so when our elder son was born and my wife couldn't actually dedicate full time to work, I quit my job and I then that's when I actually got into uh, uh, Wayfarers. So, that was back in 1991. 
so and since then it has been basically that's all i've been doing because uh, this is an industry as you know um, i think imran and even roshan will confirm it's something that grows on you so basically and and it's an industry that it's in different parts but whichever part you are in whether it's events or to inbound or hotels or restaurant whatever you do events it it just grows on you so uh so well the rest like is history but what i did actually was uh, i found that i used i actually went for my first wtm in 1992 and then i found that everybody who is there is doing the same thing they are selling the same thing they are selling the same beaches they are all talking about beaches they are talking about the usual cultural triangle circuit with the with the hill country and all that and then i thought you know yeah okay we will do this but we need to do something a little different also so that got me thinking and eventually and i wanted to guide the because there are there are quite a lot of dmcs i mean our, our business is known as a dmc or a inbound to operator or destination management company so there are a lot of destination management company in sri lanka and then pretty much everybody doing the same thing so i wanted to create like a niche thing you know and uh, we had some pretty good clientele and there were some very high end clients also but <clears throat> what i focused on mainly was uh, developing um, itineraries activity based and adventure based itineraries so that is the way i went uh, actually that is what i did and then that is how we the company ended up i mean now if you ask about wayfarers in in our generating markets like the uk and certain parts of europe they will always they always um, look see us as uh, activity and adventure based to operators with ex- offering experiential holidays to uh, small groups and 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 individuals and families and stuff so in this whole process uh, over the years like actually it's now third uh, sorry uh, sorry to interrupt you now uh... you said about uh, adventure what sort of adventure that you really uh, look at yeah. in sri lanka hiking right or... so uh, when, when you say actually when i say adventure there's adventure and activity both so what i what we really looked at was instead of just doing the run of the mill circuit we we we, we have to take them to sigiriya polonnaruva there is no option you have to do that because anybody coming to sri lanka and if they don't see sigiriya polonnaruva and candy then you know there is a problem so what we did was we made it adventure in the sense we took them off the beaten track we didn't stick to those main roads we didn't stick to doing buses now we do we do cycling trips and people ask me where do you cycle i basically we cycle the entire route and what we do is i mean uh, when when there were some companies that started offering cycling and trekking and all but what they would do is go to a dis- go to some place like base themselves in sigiriya or some place and they'll do like a trail right but what we did was we actually created trails which made that cycling trip or the trekking a part of the journey of getting from one destination to the other so starting from nigambo i mean we have cycling routes which take them nigambo sigiriya the standard trip right nigambo sigiriya Polonnaruwa, Polonnaruwa, Sigiriya, whatever, Kandy, Hill Country, down and and all the way down to to the beach on the way to to beach south. every day they, uh, the cycling trips, every day we cycle maybe around 40 to 60 kilometers a day, and and they don't use the main roads. We use, we have found side roads, small roads, village roads, and uh, those are the routes that we use, so it's safe for them, and. Um, and that was what we actually developed on the cycling side then on the trekking side also uh, what we did was like for example if they uh, we drive up to up to half way up knuckles or something and then they trek across river stand and come to the other side and then the vehicle picks them up from there even when it came to white water rafting a lot of people used to just go to uh, kithurgala and then they they'll drive up and do the rafting what we do is our route from kandy to to kitugala we stop at the rafting point or above that and then the clients would then raft down to their destination from there so that was the whole concept that we did and there is obviously an element of adventure in that 
and of course we also looked at uh, doing stuff like uh, camping and um, you know that kind of thing uh, which also is part of adventure and of course i personally i i spend a lot of time in the jungle because i enjoy wildlife and uh, stuff so so all of that has been also built into to the itineraries and uh, we are very lucky because uh, uh, agents we work with in the uk in in europe and all are also like minded what the products they market are all sort of similar kind of products so whenever we develop something new there was a market out there they would take it and actually run with it so so that's that's uh, basically yeah yeah wayfarers is now and what we have done uh, personally yeah so i have been this is all i've been doing and then of course i've been involved with our industry association uh, slito and uh, for since 2014 and even with slito i get involved a lot with doing csr stuff and also liaising with uh, line ministry <coughs> agencies with regard to you know whatever we need to sort out so That's, are you in the capacity of vice president or slider yeah, or? And, yeah vice president, i'm vice president. i'm currently one of the vice presidents of slider so uh nishad i wanted to emphasize a little fact on your yeah. the adventure tours because that's not easy right so you face a lot of challenges mm-hmm. even though you have a uh, adventure going you need to have your vehicle go behind going behind that so yeah. how do you tackle this the, the challenging part for you yeah so uh, actually good question because actually i what i didn't this thing was especially when you have european clients and uk clients we are we are bound by the uh, uk uh, the european law and uh, therefore uh, we do a lot of uh, we have lot of sops like standard operating procedures we have manuals which which detail in everything how we should carry out for safety and uh, um uh, for safety and uh, safety factor so as a result what we do is the guides who work for us also we we keep we actually train them we get our our agents to come down we train them we arm them and then we give them uh, you know we, we we test their skills uh with regard to uh, whatever they they do and uh, so because we have to be careful and we have to conform to the european laws when we are doing these activities so that is one side of it then also yeah when i when you say the vehicles have to go yes we uh, every tour there is a, there is a tour bus and there is i mean it's a small bus that's why we concentrate on small groups so maximum group size is around 18 uh, then of course there are individuals families also that independently travel with us so uh, 18 group size and and also when it comes to bikes uh, we had problems at the beginning we used to outsource and get and then invariably we used to have a lot of issues because the bikes used to break down and we had no control so since the last probably 10 or 12 years uh i we have our own fleet of bikes we have about uh, 50 close to 60 bikes which are which were all i mean we already we, the, the the ones we have now we got only, we got about got down around 4 uh, years ago and we have our own train bike mechanics and uh, we have our own storage we have our own cycling uh, what do you call um, cycle used to be called a winkel i don't know what it's called now but it's a cycle bicycle workshop and uh, yeah so we we don't give these out we only use it for our trips and therefore we are guaranteed that the bikes are in, in in very good very good shape prime condition then also we work the other thing about what we felt is we realized that you know long before all these things about sustainability came out we used to really even on these various uh, run of the mill trips that we do we would you know make it exciting for the clients by stopping and giving them a picnic lunch or you know and that means they prepare the meal there and and our staff used to do that like our guide and our bus driver and assistant and all that but we used to ensure that nothing is left behind everything is taken and disposed of responsibly so this is something we used to do i don't know from as long as i can remember so so when it came to this new sustainability things and people talking about that we were anyway doing it and the practices were there in place so there was no issue 
uh, we actually have we are travel life partners also uh, so which we are we were planning to go for certification but unfortunately since covid hit then uh, you know things have been very very slow but carbon uh, footprint uh, na carbon huh? footprint carbon yeah. footprint yeah and uh, so those carbon footprint actually are uh, affects but also uh, conducting trips or doing trips in a sustainable manner so that doesn't only talk about carbon foot carbon footprint really it we mostly we talk about um, the environment and also economically you have to ensure that uh, whatever the, the, there has to be some trickle down effect of uh, the economically economy to to the to the communities that we visit to the areas that we visit because obviously they are very um, underprivileged mostly underprivileged people and and or, or village people i mean not necessarily underprivileged but similarly you know so we ensure that because at the end of the day the the what we market as as dmcs to operators what we market is is the country and and what we have what we are blessed with naturally so if we don't if we don't go that extra mile to ensure that those things are taken care of for the future then invariably we are we are kicking ourselves in the stomach because we don't have we don't we will not have anything to sell so uh, those are uh, those are some of the uh, stuff that we uh, do on the sustainability side and again when it comes to vehicles yes we have uh, we have a backup vehicle but the thing is those vehicles are not right behind the group so the group is on its own and but within like 10 15 minute phone call away you can get a vehicle down so in case some rider decides that he had enough or he tired we can stop him and then if you have a 18 packs group we have at least three we have a main cycling guide and two assistants so there's always and plus of course our national guide but so therefore there are four people uh cycling with the rest of the group so any anyone wants to stop always there is one person can always stay with them so that those are the kind of logistics that we we had worked in and and that is that has what made it that has been the success of the whole operation actually. and when it comes to the trekking paths we use local guides from the area so that way we ensure that the locals also get some benefit out of it and they know they are they know the their backyard best uh, unlike us trying to go and figure things out so and and i'll tell you some of these guys have developed and shown us some amazing trails which are like uh, you know really breathtaking and that wow factor is all there so so we have full trekking itineraries also we, every day we are doing some and again what i have done is what we have done is to try to incorporate the trek into the journey rather than you know go somewhere and just do a small circuit so oh, yeah oh, quite, quite interesting nishad it's very uh, fascinating and uh, going adventurous and being adventurous is also an uh, adventure to us right so you are talking about journey yeah good so moving to roshan uh, you are an uh, inseparable icon in the events industry now imran was talking about uh, my stories I and mean, you are you are an icon in the events industry so your story uh, we like to hear that also the story is going to make me look very old that's the <laughs> only problem <laughs> well i actually started off uh, very young uh, uh, i mean i got into entertainment at the age of 16 uh, when i was uh, studying at hotel school uh, at claremont hotel school at that time and uh, my friend uh, harper and i were in the same batch at hotel school and then uh, you know uh, harper was dj in down south and uh, you know on fridays he used to go down south and come back to colombo on sunday and then they started doing mobiles so that was uh, 1980 and i had a big, big collection of vinyls at that time so i was into music and um, once you know harper said you know gabo had two bookings and they wanted to borrow my records so i said okay i lent my records and uh, that's how i started dj so i would say that was the start because um, unlike now you don't have big crews you know there were because gabo used to have several bookings he had about six dj's working for him and uh, we had to go and set up so we used to help the 
uh, electrician to hang the lights uh, we unpack the equipment we maintain the records we wash the records so it was a lot of hands on stuff where we had to uh, work with equipment and there were times we were doing two three bookings a day on a friday or on a saturday so famous places were women's international grand hotel new orelia uh, uh the goh uh at that time uh so that was the start of my entertainment uh where i stepped into entertainment and of course we were doing event management but we didn't know it was event management because there was nothing called event management we used to organize set up manage the whole event do all that uh i actually started after hotel school i joined the hotel as a management trainee but 83 riots i i quit i i quit the hotel industry and i joined the export company so i got into export promotion so my exposure there again to exhibitions and so on was at a very young age because uh, i remember in uh, towards the end of 1983 uh, we had a sri lankan uh, trade exhibition in in australia in sydney and melbourne so i represented our company it was only two of us that went from uh, our company and it was a edb delegation and we had to go and set up our trade stall there you know and this was to do with uh, pet products and uh, ornamental fish so it was not easy like any other products that you I mean, you're doing batik to you take your batik in your you know suitcase and you go and display it there but we had to get partners there you know ship our stuff and australia had very strict quarantine regulations sri lanka had never exported to australia so i was able to successfully break into the australian market at that time so which i was just 20 years old and uh, thereafter uh, we went for a lot of exhibitions overseas uh, these were uh, exhibitions like interzoo in nuremberg uh, aquarama in singapore so the germany exhibition needs to be one of the biggest uh, pet uh, pet and pet products exhibitions so there it was a lot of work because we had to set up and used to have big stalls there uh so i was doing that for a while so that gave me an idea of uh, you know going with the, a lot of the time i went with the edb uh, trade delegation so i was one of the youngest guys in the, in the team export uh, development board right edb uh, yeah with, with the with the export development board so they used to have the bio seller meets so i used to represent our industry and so at a very young age i had to go and do things on my own and uh, which which was good because that gave me good exposure and and the experience and to travel the world uh, but of course i got out of that uh, business after some time and uh, i got into marketing and i was uh, i totally shifted my uh, uh, trade and i got into the tea trade and um, i was working at state plantations so that gave me a um, excellent uh, training i got when i was at state plantations because we were sent to uh, companies like heath and company john keels um, forbes and walker for training and also we were trained on the plantations and we had a very very tough uh, chairman at that time ranjan vijayaratna no relative of mine but so working under people like that we learned a lot in terms of discipline you know you had to be on the ball you know, in everything you do you know you had to be proper and so on um i actually quit the whole uh, marketing scene and uh, got into entertainment full time in 1990 um that was basically when showbiz was set up in sri lanka so i was working uh, initially handling the marketing for showbiz uh, which was a uh, it was a joint venture by uh, with the london actors company uh, it, uh, owned by an indian gentleman it was a company registered in the uk they had a joint venture with golden key uh at that time for the credit card holders and for their members where we used to bring down foreign entertainment so we brought down uh, at that time the old bands you know like richard claydemon wailers osibisa uh, we used to bring down a lot of uh, dinner theater groups uh english comedy theater uh, for our members so we used to do uh, six to seven shows a year the challenge we had was sri lanka didn't have equipment so we had to fly in everything i mean when we did uh, claydemon uh, we flew in something like three tons of equipment and we had equipment coming in from uh, from france from india and we had so my job at the london actors company where eventually i was their local representative 
was i had to manage everything in, in, including the contracts with the foreign artists uh managing all their travel because uh it was only uh first it was three of us in in that office uh there was a lady by the name of nadira madhura pirmo who was running it uh, she quit and then i took over and it was just me and apir and then we had an office at the ramada renaissance uh, first at oberoi and then at ramada renaissance we were occupying a room there which was an office so it was more one man show where you had to work with the travel agents when a group came down and there are the riders going to you know 30 40 pages of each of these artists and they would even uh specify what brand of water they want how many fruit platters cheese platters you know their food requirements i mean for richard pladerman they even sent a drawing as to how the rooms should be for example you have richard pladerman suite in the center you have his guitarist on the room on the uh, left and you have another musician on the room on his right then he wanted an electronic piano in his in his suite right uh then his manager travels sorry uh, uh, roshan you are talking about the the accommodation right accommodation accommodation yeah, accommodation. accommodation right so it's a it's so much of detail you have to go into when you're organizing it it's not just the venue and the concert and the equipment but you know starting from their travel bringing them down here um and then even the room i mean they are so fussy you know we had uh, when uh, richard clayman's manager first came when i took him to the suite to show the suite uh he went into his bedroom and he said what's that noise i can hear a noise uh that was the hum of the ac he said no we can't have that because that will disturb you he needs pin drop silence so we said okay let's lock off the ac in his bedroom and keep the ac in the sitting room on then there's a mosque on the other side i think of the bare lake and there were prayers going on then he said what is that that's going to disturb i said no we can't stop that because that's a you know prayers going on in a mosque and you know this is sorry this of, is at ramada renaissance ramada ramada renaissance, renaissance yeah so, cinema so, lake side at present no cinema lake yeah. side at present yeah so that was fantastic i thought you know getting into events and that training working with all these uh, foreign uh, engineers and coordinators and so on uh, gave us uh, gave me good experience and uh, bringing down equipment working with shipping companies so we did that for about 3 years and then also i did uh, two uh, films uh, they were telugu films for boni kapoor uh, because the guy i used to work for vikram singh was a very good friend of boni kapoor so we had uh, there was an actress called i think urmila and uh, sanjay kapoor uh, they are they were just young and just starting up so that again i had to work with two film crews you know we had about 30 uh, indian crew and about 20 sri lankan crew and we were shooting around the country so it was a lot of travel uh, managing logistics to accommodation to coordinating but we wrapped up our operation because it was not viable we were not making money uh, especially because there was no sponsorship and the acts were very expensive uh with that i had because of my experience i had a lot of the local companies approaching me to do their events so my first product launch was the pepsi launch in sri lanka where at that time uh, uh, michael jackson was their brand ambassador so we had to do uh, you know the typical michael jackson act and we had to do a launch at the continental hotel as well as brc a big concert and we used steve the late steve de silva as michael jackson at that time uh so that was my first uh, first product launch uh, that was in the uh, early 90s I, i would have been 92 93 or so and uh, with that came the other events uh, the first sarasavya film awards which i uh, co-produced with jwt and then of course lake house was working directly with me where i used to produce uh, sarasavya film awards and uh, got on to events full time uh, uh at uh you know handling local events the challenges that i had was that uh, i didn't own equipment i just produced and managed the event i did the concepts to everything uh but i used to outsource my equipment so my stage light sound everything came from out we had about two stage or two or three stage set suppliers um quality was bad timing was bad you have your supplier who say he's coming at 12 in the night and he'll turn up at the hotel at 4 o'clock in the morning and we didn't have mobile communication so the only way to go and locate the guy was get into your vehicle and go you know and uh, so at 1 o'clock 2 o'clock in the morning i used to be driving around the city looking for their lorries uh 
um so with that then it became a problem because uh, i decided no you know i mean the supplies were very unreliable and then i went into buying uh, equipment so i got my first uh, sound system and my projectors and then i had a friend of mine he had lighting and uh, he used to do sets and he wanted to sell off his business he said look i'm fed up of this uh, would you buy everything i said okay so i bought his uh, stuff and i took over his equipment and the staff and um, that's how even production started so it's uh, it's been an amazing uh, amazing journey because i, I think you know did a calculation once uh, about 2 years or 3 years ago i think we had done over 5000 events and uh, also we made a name for ourselves that uh, you know when it came to uh, for example coca cola had their africa and asia region conference in sri lanka and the first time they had it here uh, they insisted you know said roshan you need to stay in the hotel for one week with us you can't go home because our ceo wants you in the hotel because it's a very important event and we had events happening every day for about 3 or 4 days um straight after the event they said uh, look you know ceo wants to know whether you can come to nepal to handle the event so i said okay so they sent me a ticket 6 months later i went to nepal and there i even helped them to select the hotels we went and saw several venues selected the venues selected the event partner and uh, we did the event in uh, in nepal and thereafter also i had a lot of my uh, indian clients who were working with us you know companies like uh, johnson and johnson tata steel jindal steel uh, all these guys i think the biggest uh, event we did was for domino's pizza we had uh, 900 uh, packs so that comes under my so we did a lot of indian clients uh, in sri lanka with that we got a client from the usa uh, one from australia Uh, and china where we handle the events here so um, but the industry is now there are a lot of, i mean at that there were only a few players in the market and now it's it's grown we are at a very high level of uh, i would say in terms of equipment on international standard uh, we have all the equipment a lot of investment has gone in so that has been my uh, journey a oh, very interesting journey and these three journeys together itself we can write a book this is this this time is not enough for us to grab your experience and your uh, uh expertise that you have done and the contributions that you have done to the industry see i want to uh, uh, post a question to all of you uh you are, somebody can pick it one of you can pick it uh but there is a bit of a taboo in the in the society you now people are not willing to come to events industry or uh, uh, mice tourism or travel and tourism so there is there's a bit uh, taboo and people do want to come and those who are coming to the industry also kind of you know they have been graded as you know you can't do anything else you, that's why you have selected this industry and things in fed so what do you think of this uh, standpoint uh, what is your view point on that for those who want to join the industry and what do you think uh, wh- how how do they how how can they uh, prosper uh, prosper and uh, excel in their uh, career in this industry because all three are in entrepreneurs uh well okay if if i if i may say um, to our industry lot of people came into it thinking of the money side being okay events you can make money uh they thought it was a very easy job because doing an event for a lot of people is that you hire a band you hire a dance troupe you hire a staging company lighting company you put them together and you do a show but uh, producing a event is much more than that you know you you need to go through as to why is your client what is the objective of the event what are you trying to achieve or what are you trying to highlight i have said this before where sometimes you know you go for a product launch and you see that uh, you go home remembering the entertainment and the event and the fantastic lighting and the stage but you actually don't remember the product and you have a client who's spending lots of money for an event because what you have done is you put on a fantastic show and you lost the whole objective of your event which is your product launch so a lot of people got into that industry and uh, thinking you can make money and uh, the industry got messed up a lot as well as a result so my advice would be to um, any younger person is it's a 
it's a fantastic industry it is not um, okay i i would call it boring doing a desk job you know where you are sitting in your office and you are doing the same thing every year every event is different every single event you are dealing with different clients clients different environments uh, different products and uh, you're, you're actively involved it's a lot of stress anybody who is in our industry i'm sure has high blood pressure cholesterol all that because you have no second take you have a sometimes 60 seconds to launch a product in front of a live audience but you have to love the job if you are joining this job to make only money that's that you shouldn't do it but you have to really like what you are doing you have to like you know coordinating working with people you have to be able to work with your uh, labor tech crew clients directors you know at any level you have to be able to interact so my advice is you know first if you are a people's person and you like a lot of action and you are willing to work late nights you are willing to work on weekends it's a fantastic job uh nishad you do what you have to say because yeah, your son so, is also a william english institute product <laughs> actually actually two of them two one of them yeah. the other one is in the anyway in melbourne uh, yeah yeah so like roshan says the main thing is you have to be a people person if you are not a people person this is not for you and i'm and when you look at i mean if you look at industry wise uh it's a it's basically if you uh, i just the wto figures for 2019 there were more than 1.5 billion that toward the toward the number in numbers right so that's the kind of numbers that you're looking at in the tourism industry if you take sri lanka 2018 was probably the last good year we had we had a turnover of around 4.5 billion us dollars with with about 2.2 million arrivals of which i think um genuine tourists were down around 1.6 1.7 and uh, and if you and even as a even now if you take the tourism industry i'm sorry uh, as a 2018 having 4.5 billion dollars is 5% of gdp for sri lanka as economy and then you are looking at uh, more than nearly 3 million people earning and benefiting from this in, from the tourism industry and that is that is nearly 5% of our entire population so so it the industry even in sri lanka is is huge but you have to be a people person and and also if you only want to get into it for the money like roshan said i i don't advise it and if you look if you look at opportunities i mean if you take the tourism industry there are a lot of subsections you have the hotels you have the the events side of it you have the tourism or the travel agency side of it the travel agency also you have the outbound guys who do the ticketing and all the overseas travel plus you have guys like us who are in the dmc industry so uh, and i agree with you kasun there is there is definitely uh, the mindset about getting into the industry especially uh, when it comes to hotels restaurants dmc all of that there is there is a bit of there is some amount of negativity and that that i think stems from uh, the fact that uh, our our rural or not only rural even our, our public in general tend to be very conservative and therefore especially that's why if you if you take the ratio i don't have the numbers but if you actually analyze the ratio of men to women in 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 the industry overall the number of women in the industry will be very very minimal and that is because again you have to go out you have to be out you have you can't clock off at 5 o'clock in the evening you can't start at 9 o'clock in the morning it it's a 24 hour job so <clears throat> whichever i mean whichever uh, aspect of the industry you take whether it's uh, of all these things i told you hotels dmcs events everything it's none of it is can be limited to 9 to 5 so it's definitely a 24 hour operation and uh, and of course of course if you do get into it it is an industry that grows on you 
I mean, if you're a people person, it really grows on you, and you can't do anything else. You just cannot do anything else once you have got into it. So, so, so it is actually uh, there are a lot of opportunities. There, there. I mean, there are specialized opportunities like uh, people like chefs, and or overall, if you do uh, uh, general management of hotels, then you're looking at. front office you are looking at rooms division you are looking at fnb of course i think fnb is also a little more uh, focused rather than the other stuff and uh, of course not as focused as being a chef but those are the guys who really get into the whole gamut of things they are putting even even in the hotel getting things going getting events together and all the rest of it so uh, so those opportunities are always there and of course if you like the industry then there are the mundane uh, sorry <laughs> when i say mundane i mean stuff like you the you need accounts people you need engineering people you need uh, you know that kind of people also that that are required to run a business but um, overall it is a it is a super industry to get into and especially if you are a people's person and and actually uh, slido has been discussing about and also talking to the sri lanka tourism development authority about doing some some um, some sort of awareness in the regions because we find that actually uh, if you're talking about um, uh, human resource we are there are even in the rural campuses i mean even in the outstation campuses like uh, rajarata and and sabragamo there are very good programs for tourism or uh, uh, tourism industry as a whole tourism education no tourism education yeah yeah tourism education for like tourism and hospitality management but unfortunately uh, the numbers are very few because because still because of that conservative uh, mindset people are reluctant to get into it but uh, actually you are aware of uh, slidos event that we you do annually which is sanchara gudav and few years ago on the sidelines of sanchara gudav we decided to do give space to the universities and encourage and have have workshops for for the students and actually it was very successful so that way we are now even now we are talking to sltda about doing some kind of awareness we are even take take a industry professional from dmc from events from hotels and just go out there and conduct like uh, workshops and uh, seminars for for students in a levels and things like that to give them to to make them aware of the opportunities that are available in the tourism industry and also parallel to that try to have uh, in the villages and in the in these uh, uh, rem- remote areas to have uh, seminars for the parents and uh, elders of the community to give them to 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 actually tell them that take the message that actually this is not a bad industry to get into and it's not something uh, it's not a scary thing like they 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 imagine and they think that it's not good for girls to get into it There's nothing like that i mean nowadays the the higher standards are maintained and even when it comes to girls and uh, if they are working late hours transport is provided all of those issues are, are taken care of so so yes we need to do actually a major drive and we need to create awareness uh, in 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 the regions out of colombo uh, and get these get the students in because there are a lot of there are a lot of opportunities available for the education but unfortunately the numbers getting into it are very small Thank you, Nishad. It's a very fantastic point that you brought. The opportunities are there, the education plus the jobs, but the awareness is the most important thing. So, uh, Imran, uh, your viewpoint. Yeah, yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, can. Yeah. So, basically, uh, when I started my uh, life in this industry, I was about twenty-one, twenty-two. Right. For me, uh, I I can't actually think of anything better. because you know i wanted something to do with promotions something to do with advertising something to do with uh, people something to do with travel and tourism uh, opportunity to travel the world right uh, and meet important people for me 
I got all that through this, right? Now, uh, Asul, I know you through the Ceylon Hotel School is Graduate Association Hotel Show, right? Through that, I know practically the whole hotel industry. Almost all the general managers, FNB managers, right? But by doing the uh, culinary art chef skill the exhibition, I know almost all the chefs in Sri Lanka and Maldives. Because we do a, a culinary competition and a hotel expo in the Maldives as well, right? Um, uh, and different levels, right? And all the suppliers, and you you deal with companies, the decision maker to take part in the exhibition which is the managing director or the CEO or the general manager. So you you meet the top end of all the companies. So the exposure when a, when a guy comes to work for me or a girl comes to work for me, and they come just after school or after college, you know, I, we have hired people from your institute, we have hired people from NSPM, we have hired people from Uovellas, uh, Rajarata, uh, Sabaragamu, uh, you know, all these units and, and all of them, you know, have been the, the best thing that they have got is the exposure, right? Because when they go into some other organization, they just work. But here, you know, you're talking to at one point, you're talking to somebody like Mayandra Manasuriya, then you're talking to uh, some other top guy in some other uh, company, you know, uh, you know, if the, the, when the guy who handles Sanchar Buddha from our side, I mean, he deals with all the uh, uh, heads of all the uh, uh, travel companies and the and the uh, hotels, right? And and if you when you deal with the slight or committee, you're dealing with the whole tourism industry from Nishad to Nirmin to Mahen to Chandra to you know Nalin to you know so the exposure anybody can. No, I don't deal with all these people, right? But the project manager or the project coordinator, the exposure that get, I'm sure uh, Nishad and uh, 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 Roshan will also agree. The exposure that people get from our industry is the biggest thing that you can get right and then the drive uh, to it you know uh, i mean uh, uh, sometimes a kid who has you know been to five star hotel only once or twice basically lives in the five star hotel when they come to work in our industry and uh, travel to so many resorts so many hotels so many venues so uh, then they go overseas right when we go to market events we go overseas you know then you see what's happening I mean, in how many industries do you get opportunity to travel overseas, right? So, so all these things put together, the exposure, a particular uh, 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 individual gets from our industry. I mean, you can't beat that. You don't get it from any other industry. The people you met, you know, you know. So the types of people you meet, right? Once I went for an appointment with uh, uh, Mr. Chandra Shafter, and I was five, ten minutes late. Uh, and I thought, my God, finish. But he came about 15 minutes late because he, he had gone for lunch. So technically, he came five minutes after me, but he was 15 minutes late. So this guy, Sandra Sharpe, is a, I mean, this is about 10 years ago, you are in his prime. He kept on apologizing to me. So I was thinking, what the hell is happening? You know, basically, you know, you, know, so you, you meet people like that, but then sometimes you get people who keep you waiting, you know, who don't talk to you. You, you get people who have different attitudes, you know. So the people you met, I don't think you can learn anything more that, uh, 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 than meeting, learning from top individuals in the industry. So, you know, then then, uh, then at a forum, you, you meet the president, the prime minister, you know, the, the um, openings, you know, the, the ministers, you know, you know how to deal with them. You know, once you call to get a message for an exhibition, I, I remember long years ago, I was calling uh, Honorable AHM Fawzi for some transport exhibition for the message. He itself answers the call. You know, for me, when I was 22, I'm making a call and I speak to a minister. I was like, my God, what is happening? You know, so so the exposure, the thrill of it, you know, is, is amazing. And then uh, that is what people should be looking for, right? Uh, of course, you need, if you, if, uh, when we came into the industry, there was no formal qualification for this industry. There was no, no education whatsoever. Now, your colleges have come in, they are creating courses for kids, it's good. But they need to learn the practical side of it, which will make things easy for us, right? So, in fact, I had hired only guys come, and girls coming out of these institutes which were teaching event management um, uh, um, uh, um, until uh, uh, the, the, the last guy would, I would have hired was also that, you know. So, basically, now we have a pool to choose from. So, definitely, 
when we give employment we will we'll look for them especially now after things are low and things are opening up for uh, post covid we will we need staff i mean we need able to the discussion informally we were, uh, before the official session started we were talking to roshan where are we going to find the staff now to run our business and right? so these these institutes can help us you know we, we need part time staff permanent staff you know you know we we have been taking people on uh, Um, uh, 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 interim basis while they wait uh, the semester holidays and all that to work for us. You know that's that's what we we have been doing. So definitely, uh, as as far as I was seeing, uh, for the last post uh, or pre uh, uh, Easter Sunday, tourism industry was. Getting a lot of interest from individuals. Uh, uh, our industry was a lot of people wanted to come and work for us. A lot of people were calling, "Can I get a job? Can I get a job?" Even the tourism industry, because that was the industry at that time. So, so now of course it's a different scenario. So I, I don't really, uh, and there was a stigma long years ago, but now I don't think it is there. Of course, uh, with this COVID scenario, it is there because our industry is one of the most worst affected industries. But uh, but uh, uh, two years uh, about two years uh, post uh, pre pre Easter Sunday uh, we 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 didn't uh, I mean we were like on the top you know people were coming to work I mean they, they were they were our our industry was in demand I would say I would think so you know and then I know I have I have guys and girls who work for me who ended up working for Dubai World Trade Center or, or Singapore Expo right. Who, who, who were trained by us? I mean, I mean, they are born up. They, they are, they are below. They are set for life. You know. So, so basically, uh, there are a lot of scope. So, I mean, nothing should be just for money, right? But yes, you get a lot of money as well if you really know what you're doing. And and your 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 basically your your career is set because this, with this industry, people who have left our companies have gone and worked for their clients. You know. You know, I I don't want to name the people, but there are five people. Nobody has gone down after leaving my company. You know, the career path they're gone up because they got so much exposure. They know people that are anybody. Their clients it's a good give them a job. You know, so if they want to switch industry, so I mean, for young guys, I mean, after your thirty five forty, it's a different story. But yet for youngsters, definitely a lot of scope. I think I think uh, great. Uh, Uh, industry to start off your career, even if you want. But you know, the worst thing is, I mean, I'm on the downside of it because our parents didn't know what we were doing at one point. Our relatives didn't know what we were doing. Our friends didn't understand what we were doing. You come at two o'clock in the morning. You are going at uh, uh, five o'clock in the mo- morning. What what is wrong with you? And we never see you. You never come for parties. You never come for you know, our our. Uh, get together, you know. So, but yet we we were having so much fun in in the industry itself. We didn't need to meet people out of the industry, you know. I mean, so, but they wonder what is going on, what is happening. So, of course, uh, communicating as to what this industry is, right? Uh, you may, uh, from uh, Roshan's area to uh, uh, travel and tourism uh, to to um, our our mice tourism or events and mice. Conferences and exhibitions. Definitely, we need to tell the world what this industry is. Because a lot of people in Sri Lanka don't really know what it is. Misconception. They really don't know what we are doing. You know, so that can lead to many things, especially when there are girls involved in it, females. You know, because they think you know they don't know what what is going on. You know, sometimes they are a bit off. Me, where, jam, in, ne, udhi, pan, to, me, hello, you know. When there's an event, you are working very close. You are all very close, you know. So there are issues like that. But other than that, I think, uh, I, I mean, even girls who are coming into this industry, females, uh, when at 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 the, they, we get them to tell their parents what they're doing. We get them. We talk to their parents. We get their parents to come to see our events. Then things are a bit okay. We gave them the exposure needed. So then, then things are okay. There are ways to handle, handle it, but you know. So this is basically, uh, I think, a lot of scope for kids who are coming in point back. Sorry, Imra. It's quite very interesting that you are talking about the exposure that you get, and we got three different uh, perspectives. So from your point, we said it's, uh, you said it's, uh, uh, 
exposure the nishad was talking about uh, the education and roshan was taking on to not focus on money and this all together this industry is a fabulous industry right uh, as part of the industry i also know that how this industry is important to us and how it's growing and you get the opportunity to travel and nobody will will get that opportunity so that's a fascinating industry so now we have come to the end of the the talk show it's, we have been discussing about uh, nearly about arna i want to hear uh, the your viewpoint on the school uh, the william angles institute at state and your what is your message to the world shall we start from nishad because you have a connection to the william angles institute at state your mute there okay so uh... Yeah, I mean, I did a lot of research when my second son wanted to do tourism and hospitality management. Uh, obviously, uh, he wanted to to do do something overseas because the older brother was had gone anyway to do what he wanted. Uh, so after doing a lot of research, I found that um, William Angles is one of the in uh, one of the schools that are very well accepted in the industry especially in the hotel industry uh, if you say you are a graduate from william angles that is that carries some weight so uh, that is the reason i uh, my wife and i decided to to send our, our son to william angles and uh, he was actually my second boy was this first in the first batch of william angles to a uh, uh, in colombo and of course after his first semester he moved to melbourne and graduated in 2017 and actually is doing pretty well and the, even in even there he found that uh, sorry and even my younger son my second, younger son uh, started at william angles in melbourne uh, 3 years ago he is currently in his uh, third year which is uh, industry placement year but even when it came to finding industry placement for your for their uh, which was part of their degree program uh, when it when they when uh, the employers found that they were william angles students there was no hesitation in taking them on so <clears throat> my second son uh, did his industry placement at a hill, at one of the hiltons in in melbourne and uh, the youngest boy is now at a new property in in melbourne uh, called the w which is one of the top of the range uh, of the i forget the the chain anyway so um so yes so basically uh, that is that is that is my so i'm happy with that the boys went there and that they are, they are happy with what they're doing and uh, actually, sorry w is part of the sheraton group so um anyway uh what i would say is that anyone who's who uh, it is a fantastic industry you have to keep an open mind and uh, you have to uh, it's good to get some amount of training if you if you uh, from this discussion alone you would have realized that uh, roshan and i and even imran i don't think any of us did any formal training except roshan said he went to hotel school and beyond that i don't think we did any formal training for what we are actually doing now so so it's something that you know uh, and and the other thing uh, which i have found sadly very sadly seriously lacking in in our student population is what you call common sense it almost non existent and that is a very very important thing to have not only in this industry but in any industry but i think common sense is something that that you is is a is pretty much i would say you have to have it otherwise it's very very tough to to get on in life and do what you are doing so yeah and i think it's a very good industry and i think people should we should encourage more younger people to get into it uh, yes it is volatile uh, it's vulnerable um i mean this is unprecedented it's not only tour- i mean tourism is the industry and events uh, and tourism the industry that got really affected by this 
but by the pandemic but leave the pandemic out we have had lot of issues i mean when the airport got hammered in sri lanka when when the uh, easter sunday bombings happened so but the thing is uh, even worldwide i mean if you take countries like singapore which are very successful in in tourism uh, and events and everything they went through sars they went through various things so uh, but the the the, the only only firm, only sure thing in this industry is that it's very 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 resilient and always comes back stronger than what it was so uh, yes you have to struggle you have to suffer when things are not going well but um, if you plan i mean that's the other important thing if you plan and if you put aside during the good times then you can actually face face these crisis times uh, there are a lot of companies uh i mean that are still we are boxing on i mean end of the day we have had zero income from april last year 2020 but um, you know if you have planned and if you have actually put aside and you have your reserves then you can you can actually cut down you can and then you can still keep your staff going and do whatever and i mean obviously not forever but to a great deg- to a great uh, to for a great length of time until things come back i mean like i said this is unprecedented and they not something that is expected but in most situations like even easter sunday bombings immediately when you take the travel tourism industry the very next day we had travel bans from all all our generating markets but that was in uh, that happened in uh, april 6th of june the travel bans are lifted and and then okay june april may may june are not great months for tourism anyway july august the season picks up a bit and and then things started falling into place and and at the winter beginning of winter 2019 was i mean was not 2018 levels but it was reasonably good until until of course uh, the pandemic hit so yeah there are ups and downs but you can rest assured that travel is something that people will always do it always happens even right now uh, when we talk to our our partners in, in overseas uh, they keep talking about the pent up demand that is there for people i mean they are just waiting to travel and i know a lot of us struggle here and uh, but but in developed countries like uh, in the western world i mean those people were paid to to stay at home and uh, if the, if the companies couldn't afford it the government actually supplemented them so so they still got collected their money they didn't go to work so there was a massive saving on that side and as a result now they are just raring to go so the so when this comes back when it does come back it's going to be phenomenal so so it's like that is what i meant when i said the tourism industry is a resilient industry and it always comes back strong when it does come back so and all these things are just setbacks so that's it i mean we went through a 30 year civil war and we still had tourism in this country and tourism was doing well so end of the day it's a great industry whether you select tourism i mean travel and tourism events whatever it's it's a really fun industry to be in and actually i i found after a while i mean like i said i always had the travel bug in me so when i got into it i always feel like i'm doing some like a hobby or doing something that i really enjoy doing so end of the day that's what you want to do even when it comes to earning a living and living your life so interesting uh, nishad so let me moving on to uh, move on to roshan your uh, your view point on us and what is your message i think uh, the education side is very very important like i said because we we basically uh, you know came and we learned on the job and even when there was some other institute that called me long years ago saying can you come and teach uh, you know lecture on event management i said look i never studied this subject i said i never studied in school oh, forget the study in this subject i said i don't know what it's to study and i said how do you expect me to uh, teach people and i actually thought i was teaching uh, 16 year old kids which was not a problem for me to go and you know stand in front of uh, 20 people who are 16 year old kids or school leavers and tell them what the event industry was not a problem but when i went for my first lecture the age group it started from 20 years up to 
and we had companies like dialogue and so on who had sent their staff and there was a general manager of a company and i actually froze i thought my god here's this uneducated guy and i had to teach these educated people right uh but it was a two hour session i think i went on for two and a half hours and you know i was talking about the practical side of things you know how we did events how we made mistakes what to do what not to do and it worked very well so at least now there is an institution that can teach everything the theory side that's there you get a qualification which is very important because today during our time you didn't need even all levels to get a job right but now if you look at our event industry there there are qualifications that people can get you know and um, in in terms of career when my son wanted to i had always told my son don't ever look at this business i said don't come into this purely because i, I always felt that a, a child basically takes things for granted when you join the family business and you know you have no values and i i wanted him to come the hard way so he went and worked he he worked at maharaja's for, for a while and then he came one day and he told me uh, tati i want to uh, do events i want to join your company so i told him three or four things i said um, okay i said if you think you are going to make more money than what you are making at your place i said no i said if you think that you are going to have more freedom because this is a family business i said no i said if you think uh, that uh, that you are going to do if you want to do the same thing that i am doing join the company and just follow what i am doing i said that again is no but i said if you think that you can join this company do something different take it to the next level i said come right i said only on that i said but don't think that you are going to have money and freedom and everything and he joined he started working with my crew hanging projectors doing all that work with the staff and actually he's taken into another level uh so that is uh, purely because the focus was on working it, it became interesting and you're focused and uh, today actually clients uh don't want to talk to me they talk to him because uh, he is at another level in, in terms of especially we are talking of online now and uh he handles all the um, online events and what is important is the discipline absolutely important because to keep this industry going you need to understand that you are working at an event you are not a part of the event uh, part of the guest list so you can't go for the event just to go and have a good time there are a lot of young people sometimes who join the industry because they will go okay it's a cocktail party we can eat we can drink and they would have liquor and so on and i always i mean i i had a rule in my company that if any of because the staff is generally friendly with the stewards and it's the fr- free liquor that's given by the guests and uh, i always tell my staff if any of you get caught having a, even a glass of wine you are sacked Yeah, that's definitely a no. That discipline in the event industry is important. That when you go for an event, you are a professional. You are there to work. You are not there to party, right? So keep the standards high. Take your job seriously. You know, and once you finish your event and once you leave that venue, go celebrate. You know, because that feel good factor is amazing when you do an event and when you have your clients who come up to you and say, "Yeah, it was a great event." absolutely successful yes i said go out and celebrate but not at that event so it's very important discipline and also our industry today is at a level sadly uh, in terms of ethics our industry has become a very very corrupt industry and i've been uh, talking about this for the last 20 years very strongly saying that you know go out there do it the right way get a job because you're creative because you're good at what you're doing and that's how we can survive i've had people who's asking me how is it that you manage because you have this policy of a no commission or no bribing policy how do you work because today the private sector is so corrupt right and i keep it simple you just deliver you do a good job there are those good clients who want that so maintain standards and learn everything at an institute come and join a company learn start from the bottom don't go into manager level okay i have a degree now or you know i have a qualification so no when you are starting at events start by uh installing equipment you know help the guys work with the technical you need to know what equipment is been used at an event you should be able to differentiate 
between you know lighting to uh, you know different types of lights different types of sound system what is needed that knowledge is good to have uh, when you are when you are in the event industry and um, i think uh, more strength to institutes like uh, institutions like uh, yours you know that is going to help our industry to bring out professionals into the industry so with that all the best to you and your team uh thank you uh, roshan imran uh, you have been working with us for some time and you know our caliber and you have come to uh, our campus also so your standpoint and also you can wrap up with your message yeah so uh, i think video manglis is a world famous name and uh, i mean Uh, especially in the hospitality industry uh, so i mean uh, i have had uh, uh, associations with sli uh, ip also when uh, uh, dr lalit gamge uh, started the institute uh, uh, long years ago so uh, uh, you know i think the the the, the, the affiliation of uh, video manglis and sli ip is 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 a great uh, affiliation and i think it's a winning combination and uh, kasun uh, and the team at uh, uh, william anglis have been doing a great job i believe and uh, the difference i would say i i worked with other institutes as well uh, for uh, especially with the kids we we they take them on uh, on um, as interns most of the time and then some of them have worked after they pass out as well um I think the difference is the quality of the students. Uh, I think uh, you guys uh, produce uh, more rounded up uh, uh, students who are uh, uh, they are to. It's not only about the uh, 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 formal uh, uh, following the course or the, or the curriculum only, but but it's just that they have a lot of other extracurricular activities as well as a lot of practical knowledge. I mean, so the William Henry student has that. so giving more practical knowledge would not be harmful getting industry veterans to come and talk to them just on their experiences like what we are doing here uh, i am sure they can get a lot by sharing experience because sometimes the theory that they start is not the same as well so getting more people like this forum as, as well as uh, some a lot of people who we who at the time also to come and share sharing their experiences is great yeah, coming getting them to come and visit events is is great i think you all do all that at the moment so um, uh, even when it comes to tourism uh, or event management or all the exhibitions and conferences i think get your uh, getting your because your students get a rounded uh, experience it's 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 fantastic and and uh, and uh, the, as i said the key is that your students are uh, uh, more exposed and they are more complete Uh, and they uh, because uh, of the quality of the education uh, that you that you give them there so you know so having said that uh, uh, this industry can give take them to different heights and we welcome all these uh, young students to to join our industry for a for the uh, with of course with with the qualification of bill manglis and uh, to to uh, progress on a journey uh, forward because uh post pandemic we are going to need a lot of human resources so my request to you all is train more guys uh, i'm sure uh we will take them in as soon as uh, uh because now we are planning for 2021 uh, so 22 and and we are thinking of human resources now you know uh, god willing things will come to an end and uh, when we move forward we we have your kids ready to to, to join us that's all i have to say Uh, thank you, Imran. Also, I would like to thank Roshan and Ishad also joining for this panel. This is a very special episode, uh, episode that we are doing on uh, talk show. All this time we had one on one. This is the first time that we are going on live with uh, a panel. Uh, thank you very much for joining with us, uh, ladies and gentlemen. This message is for you. Please listen to this uh, discussion. This is very important for you and how you can mold your career in in times to come. Do not forget to subscribe us and put the bell mark on. Thank you very much. Look forward to seeing you with another episode. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.